Good afternoon and welcome to our at home webinar. I'm Sharon Jaffe Dan, editor in chief of Home and Design Magazine. And I'm here at home on this Wednesday enjoying the beautiful snowfall, which might be turning to freezing rain. And you know what? I'd have to tell you, it's December, it's Hanukkah, next week is Christmas. And I, I got dressed up today because I think even during this time, we have to figure out how to feel festive in our own homes. And I hope you find ways to mark the season and celebrate the holiday in your home this season. Funny story about my home, back when it was the mid-century, and I know I am dating myself, I remember visiting my parents' friends in their new modern home in a 1970s enclave in Potomac. It was nothing like I'd ever seen before. I loved the big glassy walls and the open spaces, and there probably was even an avocado green kitchen. Well, I had completely forgotten about this neighborhood until decades later, my husband and I, while looking for a home, stumbled upon it and fell in love all over again. And we've been here ever since. At Home and Design, I love to see how people, um, I love to learn people's backstories and see how fate and serendipity have helped them find their dream homes. Today, we're gonna visit Tracy Morris in her home uh, that's featured in our November, December issue. And this article is by Catherine Funkhauser with gorgeous photos by Greg Powers. I love Tracy's story. Uh, a, few, a few years back in 2018, artists and builders hired Tracy to, to select interior color palettes for three homes they were, fit, they were completing in McLean. A year later, when Tracy and her husband, Justin, decided that they, were, they had outgrown their townhouse, they actually returned and ended up buying one of these homes. Um, and I think it ended up being uh, a perfect choice for her. It checked out all of the wishes on their list, including a 3000 square foot lower level where Tracy and her staff are able to work at a safe distance this year. Today, we'll hear how Tracy outfitted the home in her signature style and also meet the home's architect, James McDonald and its kitchen and bath designer, J. Paul Lobkovich. They'll not only shed light on this project, but also discuss the latest in custom building and remodeling for anyone considering a redo or new house of their own. But first, some introductions. Tracy Morris founded Tracy Morris Design in 2003. She works with a staff of four to complete projects in any style or size. Tracy approaches each residence she designs with a fresh eye and a holistic viewpoint focusing on creating interiors that speak to her client's personal style in a refined and elegant way. Introducing Tracy Morris. Hi, Sharon, how okay. are you? Good, how are you? Doing Good well, thanks. You. Thanks so much for having us today. Sure. Architect James McDonald, who's been working in residential design for more than three decades, founded James McDonald Associates Architects 11 years ago. James' portfolio includes a variety of projects from small renovations to custom homes, ranging from 2,000 to 20,000 square feet throughout the DC metro area. Hi, James. How are you doing, Sharon? I'm it's doing good. well, welcome. Glad we could get together on this wonderful weather. I know, good to see you. Good seeing you. And J. Paul Labkovich of Labkovich Kitchen Designs holds two degrees in architecture and has more than 28 years of experience designing kitchens, wardrobes, baths, and special millwork projects throughout the US. J. Paul's work has been featured in magazines locally and nationally, as well as on HDTV. Welcome, J. Paul. Hi, Sharon. Great to be here. Great Hi, Tracy. Hi, James. Hi, how are you Hi. doing? Good. So J. Paul is joining us from sunny Miami while the rest of us are freezing up here in DC. How's the weather, J. Paul? Oh, it's. I would hate to tell you, but it's almost perfect. <laughs> we, we live through hurricane season, so now yeah. we can enjoy ourselves. You, des you deserve some peace and calm. Well, we will exactly. live vicariously through you today. Thank you. Well, uh, it's great to see everyone. Um, and this is the home that, that Tracy and her husband chose. This is actually, we didn't have space for this image, so it's fun to be able to share the exterior of the house in full. James, tell us kind of what your goals were in designing the home in terms of style and functionality. Uh, definitely. Uh, this is this is one of three homes we we created for artists and builders, creating a, a little bit of an enclave in in the heart of McLean. 
Uh, these homes are roughly around 4,400 square feet on two floors, really setting up a home for right-sized living. Mm -hmm. uh, not too large a space, but very comfortable. We also decided because of the location we claimed that we wanted to set up all uh, uh, owner suite on the main floor. So that really gave us a really nice uh, scale of home to work with that had they filled the site wonderfully. And then also sort of taking a look at you know, what are people looking for uh, from the exterior and the interior of the homes as far as a cleanliness, refreshed design. So we went with sort of that farmhouse, uh, transitional farmhouse feel, really bringing us some of the warm tones, instead of the white and black, that warm tone and feel to, to the architecture. Uh, so this enclave, although it's in the heart of McLean, does feel like it's really uh, out in Great Falls or, or further out. Right. Tracy, what kind of was your first impression when you, I know you didn't think of it as yours when you first saw it, but what, what, what excited you about the exterior and what, what did you think of the curb appeal of the house? Well, my husband, ironically enough, drove past this, as James would call it, this little enclave every single day on his way to work. And when we were looking for a house, he said, what about those, you know, those three modern farmhouses? Because that's what was on the sign. And this one out of all the homes that I did, you know, it was just a three, but at the same time, this was my favorite color palette. Right. So I knew sort of in my heart that this curb appeal was exactly what we were looking for. Mm -hmm. So it definitely was my favorite. Right, oh, that's great. And here's the beautiful living room, which we have, we've seen and the dining room where Tracy is actually sitting in the dining room now. And I think, Tracy, you were saying that the floor plan just really works for you. James, maybe you can touch upon that and how you sort of envision the interiors to flow and what, what people are kind of looking for in floor plans today. Well, I think Tracy took advantage of a lot of the, the factors that we, we really set up in the floor plan. Uh, you know, this this is, doesn't necessarily have a formal living room, more of an open library uh, element. You come in through a modest foyer but it opens up both to the living room and the dining room. And this, is, this picture here is, is the view from the foyer of, of the dining room. But more importantly, it directs the vision uh, as you walk into the, the home, directs the vision towards the open family room in the back of the house. Mm -hmm. and, and, and more importantly, uh, we're really trying to set up the floor plan to really concentrate the space where people are gonna spend most of the time mm -hmm. in the kitchen, in the, in the uh, family dining area, mm -hmm. in the family room itself. Uh, and let those spaces open up with as much light as we could bring to right. bring Yeah, to wonderful space. natural light and, and high ceilings. What is the ceiling height in the main floor? Well, we, we range from a 10 foot uh, ceiling throughout most of the main floor uh, mm -hmm. with some uh, volume areas in the owner suite uh, to mm -hmm. take advantage of the uh, larger lower floor footprint from the upper mm -hmm. floor. Mm -hmm. And now we're, we're moving into this gorgeous, cozy family room and who would not want to be sitting there on this snow day? And into the kitchen and we have two views of the kitchen. Jay Paul, maybe you can tell us what your goals were in setting this up and what you sort of hope, it, hope to accomplish in terms of both style and function. Sure, we had, as James mentioned, we had three homes to work with mm -hmm. and our goal was to create three different, very distinct personalities for each of the homes. Um, in the kitchens. Uh, one of the kitchens was a, a navy blue with brass accents. One kitchen was um, cream cream with orange accents. And Tracy picked, I think, the most classic of all, of which is a, a two-tone cream and an off-white. One's a Benjamin Moore color and one's a Farrow and Ball color. And then we accented that with a, a dark uh, smoky stain on cherry wood. So yeah, which is beautiful. we were hoping that the buyer of each of these homes would pick the kitchen that sort of suited the personality and make each home distinct. Mm -hmm. That's great. And Tracy, did you make some any changes with Jay Paul once you made the home yours or you were ready to move in and start cooking? No, we were ready to move in and start cooking. And a funny story, um, as Jay Paul knows, I've told him this, my husband wanted the house next door because he loved the navy blue kitchen. That was his thing. And I said to him, I said, listen, I really think that the classic kitchen is gonna fit us a little bit better. And he really, to this day, is so glad we went with a little bit more of a classic feel. Um, but that navy blue kitchen, I'm telling you, it still is in my head. I loved it, Jay Paul. <laughs> Thank you. Well, this is great for meals around the island. It looks like it, it works really well for you and whether it's the two of you or if you're entertaining 
Absolutely. And mm -hmm. um, it's just the two of us. So we don't mm -hmm. have any children. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I have, as I like to say, my work family. So everybody's up and down the stairs all the time, you know, grabbing stuff out of the kitchen, doing right. things that we need to. Right. And it really does work so well because it it's well. right off the garage. So right. again, James, kudos for this plan. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Well, we, we try to hit a lot of the main features, you know, from the good size pantry, uh, the laundry room on the main floor, but really, again, you know, the, the, the big impacts of all these plans is the amount of windows we try to put in to really mm -hmm. maximize the light, mm -hmm. uh, which, which makes your job a little bit easier, Tracy, to, to envision all those colors in, in very clear light. Mm -hmm. And Tracy added that wonderful circuit lighting fixture too over, over the island. That was, mm -hmm. you know, her little touch uh, yeah. for that kitchen, which just makes it spectacular, yeah. I think. Gail is wonderful. What are some of the materials in the kitchen? Uh, as I mentioned, the uh, the accent wood, if you see on the refrigerator wall, is what we we'll call a peppercorn stain on cherry. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of unusual for us. We're seeing a lot of interest these days in mixing woods with paints. And mm -hmm. this is a great way that we can do it. We can warm up the traditional painted kitchen with a touch of, of wood. Mm -hmm. um, and it gives us a nice um, warm texture to it. It also makes it a little bit more contemporary and a little less classic in terms just of, of a painted kitchen. Right. You'll see we picked up the same accents in the toe kick area of the island as well as it's hard to see on the, the sink area as well, right. so. Okay, yeah, it's really beautiful. So Tracy, what did you think of the, uh, we, we talked a bit about the floor plan, but about the interior architecture and kind of the styling, it's, it's you know, a little traditional, but more of a clean modern look. Is that something you were looking for? It That's really was. Um, Sonia from Artisan, um, she is such a fantastic, individual and she picked all of the interior finishes mm -hmm. um, and it's amazing. I don't know, it's like she read my brain. So wow. I actually had worked with Sonia for um, many years when she was at Architectural Ceramics mm -hmm. and she's just such a talented uh, designer. So it was no question that she did such great selections in this home as well. So right. it really, it really, that clean line look was exactly what we were going for. So Tracy, Artisan. maybe, oh, I'm sorry, James. Artisan Builders does a great job of mm -hmm. really staying up to date uh, and, and providing some of those interior detailing in, in their homes that you don't see in the, in the traditional builder spec, speculative home. Right. right. It's true. They always give me, they always say, Paul, here's what we want to do. We want to create a feeling. They give us sort of a profile of the house and they mm -hmm. let us sort of explore that. And that allows us to come up with things that are unique and mm -hmm. really memorable you know, for a buyer. Right. So they feel like they're, you know, they are getting a one of a kind home. They definitely are. Exactly. Absolutely. That was one of the things with all of the trim details and ceiling mm -hmm. details. Typically, you'd never see that in a spec home and Artisan mm -hmm. really knocks it out of the park. Right, <clears throat> right. So Tracy, once you and Justin clinched the deal, how did you go about making the home yours? I know a lot of your existing furnishings worked really well, but maybe you can talk about your process, whether this would, whether it applies to your home or clients. What is your starting point and philosophy for, for furnishing a home and choosing furnishings and art, et cetera? Well, first of all, the house has to work for you. So mm -hmm. Stephen Jonas was kind enough to allow us to modify this house a little bit. So in order for us, we had to have a staircase that went down to the lower level so that the ladies in my office could have access at all points in time, anytime they needed to. So we added a, an egress or a staircase and then um, we also had the, um, as James has called it, the lower level media area finished. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the pictures that we actually have. Um, the lady's office is the lower level uh, media area <clears throat> and that particular room. And we needed that space finished off in order mm -hmm. to have everybody um, have their own unique space to be able to have a desk and their mm -hmm. big screens and all of those things. Right. So those were some of the things that we finished off first to make sure that the house actually really fit for us. Right. And then furnishing wise, um, the biggest thing is to understand how the rooms are gonna function. Mm -hmm. What is gonna go where? So once we determined what room was gonna be what, mm -hmm. I just started taking the pieces that I had and shifting them around in CAD and then also uh, filling in the gaps mm -hmm. as to where uh, I had some holes. Right. And uh, that's typically what I do with clients as well. Mm -hmm. um, I know 
always started with rugs. I am a rug nerd, love them <laughs> in every possible sense of the word. And um, so I will always start with the rug that gives us our, our nice color base. And uh -huh. uh, then we build up from there. Right. So let's talk about your, your living room. How, what, tell us about this rug. And I guess, um, I believe the side tables and art are new, but everything else was from your prior home. Exactly. And the interesting part about it now, I have wallpaper. I can um, at some point send you guys that picture, but we did wallpaper this space mm -hmm. and gave it a, a really deep, rich texture. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, yes, this furniture was in our last family room and uh, the side tables and the art. The art I found, uh, I always find my best artist on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And this woman's name is Joelle Somero. Mm -hmm. And she's on Instagram and uh, she uses duck cloth to create her oh, wow. paintings. And so there's this really thick texture um, all over the painting. And uh, I fell in love with it. And this one was over her bed and she sold it to me. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yep. So what kind of, what is your wallpaper like in there now? So the wall. Tell us about oh, it. Absolutely. The wallpaper um, is a Philip Jeffries mm -hmm. um, texture. It's basically a man's suiting tweed. Mm -hmm. So it looks like a man's suit in a uh, refined tweed. Mm -hmm. So it's just enough to give it a bit of texture. Right. And um, I can easily sh uh, send you guys a picture and uh, give you a spec on that if you I are interested. I'd love to see it. Well, I love the dining room wallpaper, which I don't know if, if you can see well, but it has kind of like little gold studs in it. It's also Philip Jeffries, I believe. It is. You yeah. are correct. And I have coveted this wallpaper ever since I, ever since they put it out and I thought to myself, oh my goodness, I have got to figure out a place to be able to use this. Right. And it's called Studs and Stripes oh. and oh. it's linen with gold. Um, I hate to, to denigrate the term, but it looks like puff paint right. that is on the uh, wallpaper in small studs. Yeah, it's very, very cool kind of gives the room a little bit of a, a luxurious touch too. Yes. So what are your favorite space? Maybe you can each tell me sort of what your favorite spaces are in the home and what you think are the most, uh, the, the place you would most want to be. James, I'm going to start with you on that. When you're designing <laughs> these, what was the spot you thought to yourself, ooh, I'd really like to hang out there. Well, I, you know, I, I, I sort of, you know, every house I approach, uh, I, I, I like to see how am I going to live in this home or how's my family going to live in this home. Um, and, and so really, you know, I, I sort of start with both in two sets because this is an owner suite down is that family room has got to be the space where everybody's going to live and how it connects to the kitchen. Uh, and then secondly, the owner suite, um, you know, how is that retreat going to feel, um, you know, to, to a homeowner? Uh, you know, where they're, whether they have kids or not, is, is, is that really comfortable space full of light uh, in all of those rooms. How about you, Jay Paul? Well, I think I have to say the family room as well, because that really relates back to the kitchen uh -huh. and how the space is used. But right. I'm a real big fan of outdoor rooms, and I really right. love how Tracy used the outdoor space. And the yeah. artisan homes always, to me, capture a beautiful part of the yard, whether it be an outdoor barbecue area or a loggia, or that, right. in this case, a beautiful stone wall. That to me, it was, makes the house very special. That's how it's yeah. up. It, so, it okay. is really beautiful and fine landscape also worked on the project. And, and this is just such a lush garden that you probably use almost year round. Well, again, I may be a rug nerd, but I'm even more of a gardening nerd. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that's right. I am outside. That's why this time of year is so hard for me because I'm outside every single night clipping, picking, pruning. So um, Charles Owen and um, Omar Saeed, they are just absolutely amazing from mm -hmm. Fine Landscape and they mm -hmm. were able to help me with this. And just as an update, and we'll share with you, we are adding on a screen porch and we're putting in a small mini, what they're calling a spool. So mm -hmm. um, a small little tiny pool in order uh -huh. for us to swim oh, uh, and fantastic. do laps with a swim machine in the summer. So. Oh, that's great. That'll be happening this spring. So fine. Is helping us with that too. Fantastic. I haven't heard of an outdoor swim machine. I guess they can be indoor or outdoor. Yes. So you mm -hmm. can purchase, it's from Endless Pools, mm -hmm. and you can actually purchase the swim machine separately and put that into your own pool. Okay. So that is our plan. I see. But it's truly not going to be much bigger than about 10 by 16. So it's right. 
we're putting it right in that little postage right. stamp. I, yeah. <laughs> we actually in installed one of those in our uh, in a house in Alexandria a couple of years back, and the house is only 2,600 square feet. So we actually had to get it installed prior to the basement being framed up to, the, uh, to get it in there. Great. I hope they liked it because yes. <laughs> they aren't getting it out. Getting it out exactly. it's, also, it's coming. So we're going to have to like it. That's great. Well, I learned a new term today, the spool. The spool. Mm -hmm. But the outdoor space um, is fantastic. Yeah. But I will tell you, James, you nailed it. There is a set of chairs that are in the um, owner suite, as you call it. And I will sit there in the right-hand chair. This is and your spot. <laughs> my, my husband loves F1. It's the only sport that he watches. So he is a big, huge F1 fan. Uh -huh. And I'll hear that in the mornings. And I think to myself, I'm gonna go back in my room and, uh, <laughs> and read. <laughs> so that's what I do. That's <laughs> screaming cool. engines for you. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's great. Well, I, I do love the space and the, the owner suite is so serene and, and the, the master bath as well is just so dreamy and, and large and spacious. And it really looks like it feels like a spa. Jay Paul, maybe you can talk to us about what, what your goals were in here and how you created this gorgeous space. You know, I think the bathrooms are all about materials and I think that it's picking the right tile picking the right fixtures. And unfortunately, well, the, our part of the job is, is the cabinetry related portion, but in reality of it, that's sort of the, that's not the soloist. I think the mm -hmm. soloist in any bathroom really is the tile. Mm -hmm. And this beautiful herringbone pattern tile that's got a lot of personality is really what sets the stage for this room. Mm -hmm. It's exciting, yet it's also subdued. So it's a nice balance between the two. And right. I'm, I'm in love with the light fixtures. Yeah. So, yes. So yeah. I'm a yes. lighting yeah. person. Yeah, really beautiful. Yeah. What, what is the tile material? It's a marble. Uh -huh. Tracy, you know what kind of marble it is? Off the top of my head, I don't know. Like you know nice what? Honed I, I do not know, to be honest. It, um, it is honed. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I, to give Jay Paul his um, big credit, uh, we actually added, that is one spot we did add. So Jay Paul... Their, and their whole team, they were so kind, they, and Lisa came in and um, redid our bathroom vanity because my husband and I have a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and there wasn't quite enough um, storage. So Jay Paul came in and, and designed a vanity for us and that has been just fantastic. And right. we have plenty, plenty of storage. So that definitely was a, an add-on from when we oh, moved good. in. Right, that's fantastic. Thank you, Tracy. Yeah, mm -hmm. heck yeah, I love it. <laughs> so for people who are thinking about renovating, what are some of your kind of best practices or advice that you can offer? James, do you have sort of a do's and don'ts or how do you help clients get started when they're embarking on a renovation to kind of focus on, on how it should take shape? Well, you know, every, every home that I walk into when I'm looking at a renovation is, is, is a completely new environment. So, you know, what I'm trying to understand is, is what are the problems people have with their existing home? Why are they looking mm -hmm. at renovating? Mm -hmm. What is the time period in which they plan on living in the home? So, you know, what the financial decisions are that come along with renovation. But then, then, then from there, once I understand the problems, is looking for the solutions that that are easier to do than than others. Uh, you know, does it have to be a structural solution, or what are the uh, elements that can be modified easily within the house? And sort of trying to get the biggest uh, wow for the dollar uh, mm -hmm. that that the clients are looking for. You know, mm -hmm. there's more windows, more light, more space, and that can be sometimes with minor adjustments or sometimes very major adjustments. Exactly. Jay Paul, what about you when someone wants to redo their kitchens? I think uh, kitchens and bath renovations are really on the rise. And um, I yes. think also, do you, do you see a shift in kind of how people are using these spaces, especially well, you know, kitchen? Yeah, I think the last year has taught us an awful lot about mm -hmm. how we use our homes, how much mm -hmm. time we spend in our homes. And I think mm -hmm. that's definitely affected um, what we want in our kitchens and, our, and in our homes overall. Um, one of the things I always like to focus with our clients is function, mm -hmm. because I always joke if it's a if it's a, you know, it's a pretty face, but it's if it's it's not intelligent enough to speak to, then it's not going to make us happy. So <laughs> let's start with making this space work for you. Mm -hmm. We're all you know this group of people on the screen combined, all of us together can make anything gorgeous, but it's got to work for you. So 
my job, like James, is, is to sort of root out what the most important things uh, the um, client is looking for. And I'm a big believer of working within the envelope if we can. Mm -hmm. Kitchens are very expensive items. Mm -hmm. um, and if we don't have to add square footage to a space, we can reconfigure. We've done a lot of reconfiguring of a lot of, a lot of dining rooms and a lot of homes that people don't use. Mm -hmm. I say, you know, why, rather than adding 300 square feet, let's take that space that's not being used and let's use it to our best advantage. So we right. do a lot of cases where we open up spaces in existing, uh, in existing uh, homes mm -hmm. uh, to each other. But functions, number one, I always say, and then we can make it beautiful. Right. That's very, very good advice. What about you? You mentioned that kitchens are expensive. Do you have kind of a, a litmus test on where people should spend their money and where it's better to sort of... Uh, not invest so much or is it is it individual i think it's very personal mm -hmm. we see some clients in house you maybe do with the value of the home you know some people we would say you know this particular endeavor is going to be a big percentage of the value of your home are you sure you want to invest in the kitchen this way and mm -hmm. some people say yes that's what i wanted how i choose to do that right. um i think appliances are a huge investment as well so we oftentimes will start with appliances because a high-end appliance package for a kitchen these days can run you Thirty to fifty thousand dollars. So mm -hmm. that's a very big portion of the budget. Mm -hmm. And then we have to think about the cabinetry component, the countertop component. Um, if we're doing a renovation, it's labor, electrical, plumbing, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a very personal decision, and we try to steer our clients in the right direction. Right. If a client says, you know, I need to be more budget conscious, I want to work with you, but I don't need to have the most expensive appliances, then we can steer them towards products that are going to be a little bit more budget budget friendly and still very good. For instance, right, right. Tracy, what about you and, and, and makeovers? How do you kind of help guide clients when they first come to you and they want to change their house and don't know where to start? And what are your, your rules of thumb? Well, it's funny. We, um, I just had a client's mom um, move here uh, from out of state and the house was purchased and I was told it was in move-in ready condition. And we went and visited the house and oh my goodness, it is the first <laughs> We actually are about a 16th of an inch away from a full gut. So oh my goodness. Yeah. So wow. the interesting part about it is we, the main things we try and do again, to J Paul's point, it's function, function, function. Um, this particular client has animals and they are her priority. I mean, they are just, you know, her just heart and soul. What so we have to make sure that she has a fence and she has, you know, all of these different aspects to her home, but uh -huh. we're making sure all the floors are consistent that right. she um, has a kitchen and appliances that will work. Jay Paul mm -hmm. will be talking to you about this. Mm -hmm. And um, all of those types of things that uh, at master bathroom, all of it that actually function for her. So mm -hmm. some of it can be salvaged, but the majority of it can't. And right. that's the whole trick with renovating. What's gonna mm -hmm. work for you? What's mm -hmm. gonna work for your family? Exactly, exactly. So what, what are some mistakes people should avoid Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's a, Actually, you can, oh boy. You can talk I, know. We have. <laughs> I know. Do, do we have another two hours? Um, but, no. I know the one thing people get very caught up in name brands. Uh -huh. That's number one that I see all the time. So uh -huh. I don't feel there's any need um, to pick something and build your entire space around something if it's not going to function for you. Right. For example, I love Lacanche or La Cornu mm -hmm. um, ranges, mm -hmm. but if say, for example, Jay Paul cannot figure out a way to fit that into your space, then let's not blow out the back of your house in order to fit around that particular piece. We can, right. there are so many other ways to make things absolutely spectacular. So, um, worrying about name brands would, would be uh -huh. something that, that I would say, I don't know uh -huh. about the other gentlemen. Right. What about you, James? Well, I, I think, you know, uh, the biggest, the big issue we we'll always come across is sort of, you know, what somebody's budget is and expectation of what we can achieve within that budget. Mm -hmm. And also sort of the timeline how long are they expecting to live in that home? Right. Whereas a large renovation may make sense. If you, you know, have lived there 15 years and plan to live there another 15 years and the location is perfect for you. But right. if you're if you're looking at relocating in the next five or so years, then there's something that we want to do as far as you know maybe a scaled back version of it mm -hmm. that doesn't necessarily make sense because when you're doing a renovation project, you're never going to get a dollar for dollar value out of mm -hmm. it as as an add to your home. Mm -hmm. You maybe get fifty to seventy percent of that value as added mm -hmm. value to the home 
it, it, it may make your home more sellable as a faster rate, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that value translates directly uh, to, to a higher sales price of, the, of what you've included in there. So you have to take mm -hmm. in the, into account how long you're going to live in the enjoyment of the home for that mm -hmm. five to 10 years mm -hmm. um, while you're sort of, you know, uh, you know, enjoying that space at the same right. time. Right. And Jay Paul, do you have some, uh, some <laughs> stories to tell? Well, yeah, you know, I think the most important thing I tell our clients is, you know what, come to us with your problems. Um, we'll help you find the solution. I think one of the challenges and the mistakes that people make are to come with solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, rather than problems, because mm -hmm. as Tracy mentioned, there are many different ways we can we can we can adjust the design or work a design. But if you tell me your top ten issues with your kitchen, or you know, we do beautiful wardrobes, we do you know our, the ceiling behind me is a paneled ceiling that, that we design. So we do all sorts of things with millwork. But mm -hmm. tell us what your challenges are, mm -hmm. and then let us use our our education, our experience to find the right solution for you. Right. And then also with technology, we can show you that in three D modeling. Mm -hmm. We can show you that. You know, James's beautiful renderings comes out mm -hmm. his office as well, mm -hmm. um, Tracy. So we can show you what this project will look like finished, and then we can adjust it. So I think that's right. basically my advice. Right. That's Give me your such, problem. I think that's great advice, and and not to come to designers with that you know pre preconceived ideas or solutions. And I'm always amazed at how creatively designers and architects can come up with something that I never would have thought of. I'm not a designer and I know why, but I've seen so many of them do such really creative and innovative things. So that- well, I, I think the neat thing about working with designers like Tracy and Jay Paul and myself is, you know, um, you don't have to be afraid of telling us you don't like something. And that's right. actually a better comment to find mm -hmm. out if you have a strong negative reaction, we'll mm -hmm. understand why you have that negative reaction or if you get that explanation, you're right. not gonna hurt our feelings. Right, you our actually want to hear that. To, our goal yeah. is to, to achieve a perfect project for our, our clients mm -hmm. uh, to, to make the experience as fun and enjoyable as possible, but mm -hmm. to solve, bring our design talent to solve those design solutions. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. I think you end up with a better end result as well. Yes. yes, and you'll be and you'll be pleasantly surprised. Exactly. Well, I think we're we're almost open, ready to open it up to questions. I wanted to ask you, although uh, touch upon color for a moment. I think that after seeing a lot of whites and grays and grays and neutrals, we're starting to see people go a bit bolder with color. And I wanted to see what you thought, what your predictions are, if you have colors that you think are really on the rise. Share your thoughts, Tracy. Well, I know I have been so fortunate to be one of the 16 uh, designers for, for Benjamin Moore with their right. designer alliance. Right, that's right. So it is just so much fun to be able to work with Benjamin Moore. I've worked with them for the last 11 years, helping them select colors and mm -hmm. um, go all over the world and do things uh, with them. So I know we are seeing much, much bolder. Their color of the year is a G and teal. Mm -hmm. And um, I, don't, I didn't think I would see that again. Mm -hmm post 80. Right. So this right. is amazing. Um, I know how you feel. <laughs> I know. It's just like, woo, okay. But this is a beautiful, beautiful um, sort of grade down teal. And uh, I think it's beautiful. But at the same time, we are, I know, um, I know uh, Stephen Jonas, I was just walking through a house with him, uh, with Artisan, and they're doing a very bright blue kitchen. Well, that's um, a bright blue, isn't it, Tracy? It's a bright blue. We, we took that inspiration from a Volvo paint color, from a car oh, paint color. Oh, fantastic. That is <laughs> so fun. But yep. um, I just knew, I said, well, we'll see how that one turns out. Right. You know, I think it looks absolutely beautiful, but that there are some bold colors coming out these days. And I just think it's fantastic. I know for myself, um, personally, I like to keep things a little bit calmer and quieter because um, I'm already a very sort of lively personality. <laughs> so I know it helps me to uh, calm down to have things a little bit quieter in my own home. Uh -huh. But we have, uh, for example, we just painted, um, we're painting right now a client's house. Jay Paul's working on it with me too. Um, their library, a, it's called Rocky Coast from Benjamin Moore. And it's really, really deep gray blue and we're using um, a Philip Jeffries uh, wood wallpaper on the ceiling and that's going to be some bold color that we can share with you in a few months. That's exciting. Yeah. Well, I'm going to open our chat up to some questions now. Um, let's see. 
and see the questions. Here we go. Um, we have a realtor who says that um, every sale today is followed by the buyer immediately spending a lot of money on new kitchens, bathrooms, and more. Strangely, kitchens, worth, which are the most expensive renovations, seem to be the one part of the house where design fashions change most frequently. I grew up in South Africa where almost every home was custom built. Personally, I note there is so much sameness to the way these buyers are renovating. I tell clients who renovate to think in terms of easy to change aspects of the new design, such as paint, when incorporating mixed components. Paint is the easiest to change. A question is to what extent do you design so that later modifications and modernizations don't require complete renovation? Since uh, our, our questioner is uh, Jeff Kalmeyer, J, J. Paul, maybe you have an opinion. Sure. You know, cabinetry today, the modern finishes we put on cabinetry are very durable. They're, they're baked in ovens or halogen ovens. They're very, very um, strong finishes. We, we tell our clients there's a, it's a lifetime you will have this finish on your cabinet. Having said that, a cabinet can be painted and refinished. We just had a client of ours, we did a project for 15 years ago, a dark cherry kitchen that they loved, but it was just too dark today. Mm -hmm. So they said, What's, what should we do? Should we rip it all out? And I said, no, mm -hmm. way too big an investment. It's in perfect shape. Let's go ahead and repaint it. And that's not something we do often, mm -hmm. but it was magnificent. We right. picked a couple right. of Benjamin Moore, Benjamin Moore colors it is a whole new world in there. Um, that's the easiest thing we can do is to refinish a cabinet or change the color of a cabinet. Mm -hmm. The harder thing for us is appliance technology changes. And if you were to take a, a wall oven, for instance, and remove it from a custom made cabinet, getting an exact replacement of that cutout size would be a challenge if it were 10 years old, for instance. So mm -hmm. there's some limitations. Pulling off countertop is a great easy solution as well, as long as you don't damage the cabinetry beneath the countertop. Because mm -hmm. we definitely see trends in countertop materials. You know, right. 15, 20 years ago, we were doing very different things than we we're doing today mm -hmm. for countertops. Thank you so much. Here's another question. Um, what is a, a feature that every custom home should have? James, I'll let you take that one. Well, I, I, I think uh, really a custom home, uh, every, we're, as, a, you know, as you introduced, we work from very you know, uh, reasonable custom homes to some extremely large custom homes. And, and so really, every time we work with a new client, we're trying to understand how they live. Uh, so whether, whether it's a single, you know, a, a couple with no kids or an older couple or, or a family has lots of kids, it's really trying to, trying to get the home to work to their personality, their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, every custom home is going to be different based on that answer. Mm -hmm. You know, there isn't one feature besides the family room, the, the kitchen and the, those living spaces that every, everyone really wants to have and the way people live. Right. Um, let's see. Many, we're getting lots of accolades for the entire house, the kitchen, your artwork, the light in your home. Uh, one anonymous attendee asks Tracy, where did you get most of your lighting? So most of my lighting is through circle lighting. Mm -hmm. um, I, I utilize a lot of visual comfort. And then also um, I know so many folks have asked me where I've gotten the fixture for in the master bathroom. Mm -hmm. And that is the Eves fixture from Urban Electric. So they're another one of my favorite um, brands as well that we utilize. But mm -hmm. between Circa and Urban, I don't think you can go wrong. Right, right, that's great. Here's another anonymous question. Did you install an audio system or other modern technologies in the home or what trends are you seeing in, in terms of technology? So maybe you can all touch upon any smart home features that you like and, and what, what you might have in your home, Tracy. I know for us, we did. To answer that question specifically, we did um, install an audio system. Um, I'm a huge music fan and I know it is, for me, it's sort of like, you know, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, you whistle while you work. So everybody's gotta have a little bit of music. The ladies downstairs in the office, we make sure that there's music pumping through there all the time. Right. So we did install that and that is on a Sonos system. So for me, Sonos was the easiest way to be able to bring speakers in. We have them actually mounted at the top of, um, 
J. Paul's cabinets, small speakers that allow the kitchen to have sound. Um, we have put sound bars in. Um, we were able to incorporate a security system um, through all of that. I'm trying to think of what else did we do? Um, and of course, all of the Wi-Fi uh, throughout the house to be able to allow um, mm -hmm. ourselves to work and my husband to work. Right, that's fantastic. James, when you work on, on new custom homes, what kind of uh, features are most popular now or what trends are you seeing in smart technology? Well, I, I think, um, you know, from, uh, you know, some of the, uh, uh, you know, audio systems, security systems, uh, a lot of the, those features are actually coming out in wi wireless feature uh, format, mm -hmm. which makes their implementation in uh, post-construction as well as during construction mm -hmm. that much easier. Mm -hmm. uh, then you get actually into blind, uh, you know, uh, remote control blinds, doors that, you know, the, those big window walls. There are some brands that actually come that you can, you know, sit across the room and hit the, hit the uh, button and the whole window wall opens up. Um, the lighting, you know, uh, program lighting features as we get up into levels of home, uh, you can you can spend a little bit or you can spend a lot. It really mm -hmm. depends on what you want out of your home, mm -hmm. you know, what you must have to achieve those elements. Uh, right. and, and especially with today, everybody working from different locations of the home, make sure you have a good wireless or broadband throughout the home is, is critical. Right, that's, that's really good advice. Well, I think that's about it. I have one last question to ask the three of you. This was such a treat and you both, you all are so insightful and uh, such experts in your field and inspiring to everyone. Here's a question for you. So we're towards the end of what has definitely been a hard and stressful year and hopefully a brighter year is, is coming. If you could land any dream project next year in 2021, what would it be and why? Ooh. Oh, wow. Hmm. I'll start that one off by saying yeah. I don't really have a dream project. I think what I do every day working for people really ends up, you know, sort of being my uh, fulfilling uh, uh -huh. nature. Um, I do end up with a few favorite projects every year after they're complete. Uh, right now, we're probably working on one of the largest homes, in, you know, I think the 25th larger home, largest home in America, but we also have a couple 2000 square foot homes, they sort of call the, that jewel box architecture. So I get to have fun on all ends of the scale. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I, I don't have that dream job. Oh, I wish I got that one. Right. It's, it's, we're getting those every day, which is, which is so much fun. Right. Tracy or Jay Paul? I think that I can echo James' sentiment as well. Our, our work is so varied. We work all around the country, from condos in Chicago to houses in the Cape, uh, the right. summer, summer homes elsewhere, that I think the most exciting thing for me you know, going forward is having clients that are enthusiastic. That's yes. what makes a project for me a dream job. Right, that's great. And I know for me, we are so fortunate. I feel so blessed. We work um, all over the world and it's been a lot of fun. Um, but it's really the clients. It's really the people we get to work with. I right. am so lucky to have such amazing people. And uh, not only that, such amazing vendors to work with. James and Jay Paul, what fun. And uh, yeah. most days are absolutely spectacular, fun to work with. We all have our moments, but i um, just looking forward to having 2021 be a little bit less restricted and hopefully <laughs> yes. be able to actually really see each other and hug each other and, and um, yeah. Hug our clients. person again. Yes, <laughs> right. true. Exactly. Well, we're, we all can't wait for that. And next year yeah. we can get together in person and go back to having events. And, and See what our clients look like together. without masks. <laughs> yeah. <Right. laughs> I don't recognize And each other for that matter. Oh, right. my goodness. Right. I know. This is a luxury. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, thank you so much. I so appreciate your time today. And thanks to everybody for joining us. I wish you all, the three of you, a happy and healthy holiday. And a wonderful and prosperous new year.